Hi, it's Kiat. So, I got this doll like this. I didn't remove the head. The kid that owned this doll before basically did the work for me. Unpaid, of course. First and foremost, let's just jump right into the action and shorten his legs just a teeny tiny bit, just because I find his abnormally long calves ugly. While you recover from your dentist flashbacks, I reattach his legs with some trusty epoxy sculpt, which works splendidly. After we shortened him, we also bent him into the shadow realm, also known as 5-9 inches realm, from which he will never recover. Before explaining to you what exactly is going on in this video, I much rather start working on this fluffy fella's head and try to find my words, so I don't sound like a nutcase. As you read from the thumbnail, I'm going to make an 80s inspired villain, but he's a dog. Hmm. Bougie concept, I know. I let this information I just gave you sit a little bit because I know you need it. So in the back, you just saw me rolling a piece of foil into a little ball, which will be later the center of this lad's head and I used some clay to cover it roughly. Now I'm slowly working my way through and refining this dog's face and giving him the nice eyebrows every dog has. After that I give him some tufts on his sides and head. Doesn't look too shabby right now. Might I even say that I'm proud of my first time sculpting with clay. With a needle tool I start to detail his nose and mouth parts since he's a villain and he gotta need a villainy smile. make his smirk work, I insert a wormy dealy as his pearlies right into the hole I made before. Last time I checked, I was sure dogs had eyes, so I will be giving him some big puppy eyes as well. Nailed it. With my ball tool I roughly mark where his socket should be and then add and take clay to make his forehead and villainize, villain, villainify, I make his eyes evil. I add some clay right before his eyebrows end. I will give it a good bake in the oven and we are finished. Almost. I just scrape some clay around his neck joint away and it fits like a glove. I use this cursed thing to attach his head. Oh, why is it cursed, you ask? Well, because it took me 10 years to find this shit. It's like a cursed artifact that only appears every 10th moon after you follow the moon shadow of Stonehenge to a weathered obelisk with an inscription that sends you 20 kilometers away to a secret target at night. Only then it will appear. All this specific? Yes. Did I really animate this at 3 in the morning on a workday? Also yes. Anyway, I fixed up a few things on his sculpt like making his ears thicker and making the tufts on his cheeks symmetrical. Oh yes, and I also gave him a little back tuft to make it extra hard for him to fall asleep at night. And here's how his head looks. I also tried to remove some things with acetone, but just let's say it wasn't that successful. Okay, now, I think I'm deep enough into the video. I have to let you know that I'm not a furry. And it doesn't matter what I wrote under the Pig Panthers Twitter account, I'm not. So what exactly animated me to create this 80s dog human hybrid villain thing? Well. I simply saw a pic of Quail the Will and I thought, hmm, what if we combined the superhero craze with the 80 synth wave craze, but make it Quail the Will doggish? 
I don't know if you get my visionary vision, but I like it. It's odd, but odd enough to make some good art of it. So did my friend Volkity think, and before you know it, we were making a collab. I sketched up some things and ended up with this very not so good fella here. Since he's a dog, I got to choose the best dog breed in the world, of course. But since I didn't want a war in my comments, I decided on the second best dog breed, the German Giant Spitz. You let me know what the best dog breed is in the comments and be as descriptive as possible. Wall Kitty chose a dog to be a Kalupo, a Mexican wolf dog. The Kalupo is also completely black and mine is completely white, so they're kinda yin yang, which is fun. Oh, and I forgot to tell you his name. His name is Ludolf. And there is no connection between him and a famous red-nosed game. And it also means his parents were assholes. Ludolf means famous wolf, which is kind of fitting for a villain. That's why most people call him Ludo. His kind is chosen, but what about basically the rest? My superhero knowledge only consists of Megamind and the first Catwoman movie, which was good, just admit it. But I know every villain needs a backstory, right? So, um, he likes money. Yeah, that's it. Insane character development right here. He was basically this really awkward kid in school, um, which school, uh, like Superhero America school, that loved to build little robots, the Ludobots, that could move around remotely. So a stereotypical 80s computer nerd, but then got hit by the puberty bus. At day he works at a tech company, but at night he scours places where he can get in and steal anything that he can turn into money. He controls his little robots, which he perfected from his childhood and uses them for bombs and trackers. I choose to give him a monotone but stylish clothing style to give him more of an undercover feel. And his 80s analyzing glasses, I just could not not give him them. And don't forget the shoulder pads. They will return into fashion, you'll see. Is there something that I forgot? Oh yeah, you see, my color partner is also doing a dog villain who is coincidentally his partner in crime, but not only in crime, but also in heart. They're married, that's what I want to say. To check out the creation of his better half, link in description. Oh, and also, this video has been living rent free in my mind the entire time. Look at how cute these pens are. Zach, that's gay. Jared, we've been dating. If you want to see the full drawing process of him, I released the video of this on my second channel, to which I ban all my non main channel videos. Enough concept. I primed his head white, so I don't need to painstakingly paint it with acrylic paint. Now to the face up. I spray him down with one layer of MSC and started to blush his ears and nose pink. And now dog noses are usually not that pink, but it gives depth to his flat face. I also go in first with a brown watercolor pencil and define his eyes and brows. I later switch to a brush and acrylic paint because you could just see the pen paint crack and that's not a good look. I also chose to give him a red outline under his eyes and creases under his eyebrows. Oh yes, and here I'm trying to draw his pupils. Emphasis on try. His left eye was too far inside his socket, so I needed to put some modeling putty inside it to lift it up. As the last step, I gloss his nose, and this time I use the resin to fill up his eye sockets. So the face part is finished, and we can work on the clothes and the villain machines. And with we, I mean I. I use my secret stabby 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 method to turn this wool into a shawl that I can put around Ludo's neck to simulate the fluffiness of his bits.
to channel my inner BA, I decided to give him some necklaces on his own. There, perfect. Now he's naked. I feel like I need to censor something. Now to the thing that keeps me up at night, sewing. Like the professional that I am, I used my high quality paper towels to eye the shape of his pants, which I traced then onto some old jeans, which ends me with four pieces. Yes, four. I had two little fabric left, so I sewed two leftover things together. And all was soon together because, geez, I could not use a single frame of that process. These are high waist jeans, which look almost too perfect. So I go in with water first and then start pinching the fabric together to roughen it up. After I realized that you can basically see nothing, I switched to watered down acrylics and dry brushed paint onto his jeans. As he's still barefoot, he gets some cool 80s sneakers. You know, I just could have gone and bought them somewhere like the same person. But am I? No. So I covered some existing Monster High shoes with clay and started sculpting some cool sneakers. And oh boy, don't let this footage fool you. One shoe took me two hours alone. I slowly worked myself around the base and layered the different parts around each other. Ha! Huh. Two hours and 30 seconds. I cry. I actually wanted to use real string for the shoelaces, but I could not get the right size in time. After both spent a quick break in the sauna, I primed them with white. Can we just admire them for a quick second? Ah, okay, continue. Oh yeah, this thing. I took the liberty and carved a sole into the shoe and it took me an embarrassing amount of time just for me to cover them later completely with black. The shoes needed some coloring and I also shaded them lightly with pastas and gave them a wash. And after all this work, they did not fit! So I decided to Cinderella him a bit and cut his toes and heels off. Did this help? <coughs> so I decided to glue the shit together before I go ballistic. Oh yes, the jacket. Please, please don't let me go there. I first wanted it to be dark violet, but this is strictly a no violet fabric household. Oh yes, and here's me struggling. After what, one stitch? Pathetic. So here's what I ended with. I still needed a proper color, so I made one very professionally by holding my pen like a kindergartner. Oh yeah, and here was my attempt at making a cool belt. But god was it ugly. I later changed it into a thin one. Now that he's fully clothed, let's give him some woolen gear. So first and foremost, I did absolutely not steal Dragon Ball analyzing glasses. This is absolutely not true and only allegations. Anyone that mentions it will be blasted by Ludobots. I colored the lens by using liquid alcohol ink and then covering it with resin. I don't know what a normal curing time for resin is, but mine took about an hour, so that can't be right. And finally, let's give him his techno machine thing that he keeps carrying around. He uses it to control his Ludobots but also track down his transmitters and to hack into simple things like radios or streetlights or bank accounts or into the White House. Simple things. For the machine I used cardboard and wire and glued them all together. I have to admit that the paint job is quite sloppy, so don't look too close. And after that, let's see our finished boy Ludo. <laughs>
not the classical version of a comic book villain, but more of an everyday Joe that became a villain out of a whim. I really loved sculpting his head and the shoes. They were a lot of fun. I loved the process. Don't forget to check out my color partner, Val Kitty and Ludo's partner, Zane. It was a blast working with Val Kitty and I hope to be working with her in the future again. Basic YouTuber thing, but it really helps me if you like this video and maybe even subscribe. Anyway, see you next time. Ciao, ciao.